open up her little cage here. She's, I think she wants to grow really fast too. She's getting close just like Chody. Whoa, hey, calm down there, girl. All right, guys, we're recording. Uh, I'm gonna show you my dwarf retix. Just an update for you, uh, anybody who's interested, um, pretty much how big they can get. And this is Chorisa. Uh, she's also a dwarf. Um, well, not fully, not 100% dwarf, but she's got dwarf blood in her. She's probably 50% dwarf. Um, she has other genes too, but she's about three years old. I've been power feeding her the last, probably the last three months, but definitely um, in mind getting some eggs out of her. So I'll show you how big she's gotten and what you can pretty much expect from from a, a dwarf reticulated python when, if you guys are interested and want to get one. Um, here, let me take her out, make sure she knows there's no food, give her a nice little touch, and then I can reach it and hopefully get her out. Oh, she's feisty. Okay. So, as many of you remember, by the pattern, because she's definitely a lot huger snake than she was probably the last time I even showed you guys. Well, I mean, I think I've kept you updated, but when I first when I first got her until now, you can see she's put on a lot of size. She's heavier now. I'd say probably about 30, I don't know, maybe 35 pounds, something like that. And uh, she's getting close to having eggs, I hope. She's about three, like I said, and um, that's about the age that the females become ready and, and ovulate. So I'm trying to get that going. That would be awesome. And the, um, I did try to put the male in with her, but she wasn't ready yet for that. And she let him know she uh, basically didn't want him to get near her. So she would just like kind of hit him like with her elbow, kind of like the get out of the way. Damn, she's big. Um, not huge, she's a good size. It's about as big, I'd say, as you can expect a dwarf around the size, maybe a little bit longer. But. You can keep them pretty much healthy this size and and breed a female. I think she's pretty much about there. So maybe she's probably about, I'd say about eight feet. Definitely taller than me. Uh, very strong, but it's nice that she's kind of really well fed because she moves a lot slower. So, um, but she's still very, very strong. And as you can see, she's pretty you know she got nice colors and everything and oh and she's big yeah she got wrapped around my back too so I'd say yeah definitely a good eight feet I'm, I'm six foot tall you can see how you know she compares to me she's probably another two or three feet more than I am but she's pretty cool in the cage that I'm a custom cage that I build I know she's not a huge as retic, but I think this is a good size for people that don't, you know, don't want to have a massive snake. I personally do would like one. It would be awesome to have a 20 footer in my room. Like, I really like that idea. But for people that don't want them that huge, but still want a pretty, you know, impressive snake, like people come over and I let them hold her and, and they're pretty impressed. I mean, she's heavy. She's a long snake, bigger than a, a you know, a boa. A big ball would be about the same size, but she'll probably get a little bit longer, and she moves definitely a lot more. So um, I'll show you in comparison to my other girl, which is my golden child. Uh, these guys were about the same size, I'd say about a year ago, before I started really feeding this one to get the eggs, because she's the first one to become ready. Uh, Cleopatra, which is the golden child, still has probably another six months before I'll start feeding her like this to get her big enough to basically have enough energy to make the eggs and become mature and whatever it takes you know figuring it out as I go but so anyways this is Chody or Cleopatra 
she's definitely a lot more feisty because she's thinner, so I think she's more basically, how would you say, she's more athletic than Cleopatra. Cleopatra's getting ready to have babies. This one is uh, still ready to go into the wild if she needed to. I don't think, uh, I don't think she could, uh, she could go in the wild, but, you know, you know what I mean. So here's Cleopatra, it's been a while since you've seen her. She's not so much bigger, you know, she's kind of staying the same size, just kind of keep her on a consistent, you know, I'd say about a, what is it, a extra large rat every week, every 10 days, just to kind of not, you know, grow her super fast, but keep her on a, on a good healthy diet, and I think she's really pretty, nice colors, get her more in like the sun, you can see she really shines in the sun, purple, you can see all the rainbows off her, um, this is probably my best snake as far as the colors, She's also het for albino, so when I breed her, she's gonna make me some albino babies. That'd be awesome. You know, she's probably about six feet, I'd say. Maybe five something, I don't know. She's, I'd say she's about as tall as me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, she got mites. It's probably like twice now since I've had her. Um, and what I use to get rid of them is these right here. Basically, I'll notice them kind of soaking in their water bowls, and I'll take one of these as uh, pest strips from Hot Shot, cut off probably about a size of a quarter, and I'll put it in there. You can take out the water bowl, it's probably a good idea. Um, I just put it on the opposite side of the water bowl, but however you feel more comfortable. I know it's poison, so keep that in mind. You know, these are animals too. It says, you know, keep safe around humans, so same thing. But I do notice that within two days, all the mites are dead. And then, you know, clean the cage, and they're gone for a while. But it seems like I can never really completely get rid of them. You know, one, one snake or another, at least, you know, every couple of months, I'll notice has mites, and then I'll treat them. And I have the other uh, Preventamite spray, which works all right. It doesn't work nearly as good, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, if you ever have that problem, that's what I use, so... So, pretty cool, she likes going in there. Chilling, she just had a, a rat. Not super big, but. And there she goes, okay. And, let's see. Pull out, uh, show you my male that's gonna be breeding the females. Uh, his name is Evo. And. Evie, I don't, I won't mess with her today. I'll show you her in another video. She's a little more of a biatch when it comes to getting her out. But this is my stud right here. He's a uh, he's ready to he's ready to breed. And I put him in with uh, with Chorisa, and right away he was over there trying to uh, trying to mate her. So I'm pretty confident he's going to be a good male. Um, pull them out real quick and then uh, we'll be done for now. And, uh, he's, a, he's a fast mover. I think he no, definitely knows the females are in the room, so he acts like a, he acts like a uh, um, a dominant male trying to get his females. Goes in there, but she wasn't ready for him, so didn't quite work. He got the he got the message really quick. Um, I kept, you know, the whole thing supervised and just pulled him back out. The first time I did it, she actually bit him, cut him. I put some Neosporin on him and and uh, he healed up pretty good. He's about to move out of this tub. He's pretty much, a little, in my opinion, too big now. And uh, into one of the custom cages that I made, which I'll show you here. Looks like this. It's got stuff in it right now actually, so it's not the best example, but it's pretty much the same one as my Chorisa cage, uh, except for uh, this one was six feet and the new one that I built is four feet long, or excuse me, Chorisa's is five feet and this one's four feet long. 
um, and uh, 24 inches high and 36 inches deep. So it's a good size, I think, for a male retake um, with the dwarf. All mine have dwarf blood. So, and then uh, I'll just let you peek in at uh, Evie. Just kind of open up her little cage here. She's, I think she wants to grow really fast too. She's getting close, just like Chody. Whoa! Hey, calm down there, girl. Yeah, see, she's uh, definitely food driven. As soon as I open that door. You saw her fly out at me, but watch, as soon as I touch her with my little stick, she'll go, <laughs> she'll go back in, but, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's feisty one, that's why I don't mess with her as much, she's got a little bit of stuck shed, um, I feel like her cage is a little more comfortable because it's kind of tighter spaced versus the really tall one, the next time I build a cage, I don't think I'm going to make it quite as tall, um, this is a little bit better, it's a little bit taller than... Evie's. Um, this is, I believe, 18 inches high, and Evie's is only 12 inches high. So I, I definitely go with the 18 next time I buy one of these animal plastics cage. This one has the light built light built in, which is really cool too. You can see your snakes really pretty. Um, but yeah, Jordy's or uh, Evie's a beast. She comes flying out like. Don't mess with me, bro. But, uh, you know, that's just her food response. She's a nice girl when, uh, when you let her know there's no food. Um, I won't, uh, torment her today. I don't want to mess with her too much because she's learning, or she's, uh, what's it called? Finishing her shed. But, uh, yeah, guys. I will catch you on the next one, and thanks for watching.